Good evening, brothers and sisters. As a state presidency, we welcome you with our love to this annual Christmas devotional, sing-along, and opportunity to share testimonies. We want to initially thank Sarah Clayton and all of the members of the choir for their participation, as well as beautiful accompaniment by Renee Packer. We would encourage you to sing along with the choir as you see fit as families and we hope that you would do so. We want to offer our love to you as our state family and share with you our testimony as a state presidency tonight of our Heavenly Father who not only loves us greatly but certainly we remember at this time of the year when he gave us the greatest gift of all, the gift of his Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. May we all rejoice in that is our prayer as a state presidency in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time of the year, we often hear the phrase, peace on earth. As we think of peace, it brings to mind many different things to each of us. And what is the source of true peace and joy? We all seek inner peace in our lives and know that it comes from Jesus Christ. It comes through our Savior as we lose ourselves in service to others, have faith, and experience joy through love. This is the season when we seem to find it a little easier to give time, talents, energies of ourselves to those around us, both known and unknown. As we give and give at this time of the year, we find peace. I'd like to suggest that maybe this year we give just a little bit differently. Give everlasting gifts. The Savior never gave with the hope of receiving anything in return. He gave liberally and lovingly, and his gifts were of immeasurable value. He gave eyes to the blind, ears to the deaf, and legs to the lame. He cleansed the filthy, gave physical health to the weak, and breath to the dying. His gifts were opportunity to the discouraged, liberty to the oppressed, forgiveness to the repentant, hope to the desperate, and light in the darkness. He gave us his love his service, and his life. And more important, he gave to all mankind the resurrection, salvation, and eternal life. We should do all we can to give like he gave. To give of oneself is, after all, a sacred gift. We should give as remembrance of all the Savior has given. It's easy for us as members of the church if we just follow Light of the World initiative small acts of service and kindness each day to help us remember to give as the Savior gave. At this Christmas, 
Send a thought to a person you've not communicated with for a very long time. Share your testimony. Encourage another friend or family member. Manifest your loyalty in word and deed. Keep a promise. Abandon ill will. Forgive an enemy. Try to understand. Examine your demands on others. Think first of someone else. Be kind. Be meek. Smile a little more. Express your gratitude. Accept a stranger. Brighten the heart of someone less fortunate than you. Take pleasure in the beauty and wonder of this life. And above all, speak love to people and then do it again. A life full of altruistic service it will also be full of peace and joy that is beyond comprehension. The Savior said, Peace I live with, leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I testify that when we give as the Savior did, with purpose full of heart, his promise to the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well will be fulfilled in our own lives. He said, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So give this water during this Christmas season. Peace will come from living this principle of giving as the Savior did. One teaching he gave was to always think of others, to give like he gave. I testify that this principle will bring joy into your life at this most joyous of seasons. Lose yourself in the service of others as did he, whose birth we celebrate at this time of the year. I promise that as you do, your joy will be full and you and the receiver will be blessed. Please know of our love for you, our stake family. We rejoice with you in the knowledge that the babe in Bethlehem became the Savior of the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
there's something magic about a Christmas tree. I remember as a child looking with great anticipation to the moment of Christmas morning. Somehow, just like the song Toyland, all of that changed to some degree as I grew up and the magic was different. My first Christmas in Germany as a missionary, I was invited to the home of a member and I watched as they lit their tree with candles and sparklers and I thought for a moment they might burn the house down. But in the light, I saw the magic again in the faces of their children. Two years later, I was home and remember distinctly sitting in our living room in Northern California on a cold, rainy pre-Christmas evening. There was a fire in the fireplace. Christmas music was playing on the, uh, well, it's a 78 record kind of a thing on the phonograph. And I was uh, staring at our Christmas tree while I wrote Christmas cards to friends and family. And there was a piece that filled my soul that day that I've never forgotten. Almost exactly one year later on Christmas afternoon, I answered the door to greet two girls from our stake. One was a young adult with whom I served in young adults, and the other was a uh, high school senior that I hadn't really met before. Her name was Tisha Davidson. That was 50 years ago, this Christmas. My brother, my sister, and a couple of friends, we all sat together on the living room floor next to the tree playing games. Two years later for Christmas, we were engaged to be married that coming summer. There have been a lot of Christmas trees down through the years. In that next 50 years, there's the homemade ornaments on the tree for two very poor college students in our very first apartment in Logan. And then there's the year we welcomed our first son into the home for Christmas. And then we've, uh, there are other five that followed over the years. There was the first Christmas here in our stake when we bought our little home in what's now the Peruvian Park Ward. And, and we're still there. There were those years when our children could hardly sleep for excitement and anticipation. And then there were years when one and for several Christmases, two of them were gone at the same time as missionaries. And it's, it's uh, an amazing thing to feel the anticipation of a Christmas phone call to a missionary who's on the other side of the world and being able to talk with them. No better present for a mom or dad to have than to know that your child is safe in their service to the Lord. And we gathered around the Christmas tree for those occasions. Now we watch our grandchildren delight as they look at the tree and they see that same promise of Christmas morning in their eyes. Even from the days when I was a child, I delighted in the promise of Christmas and the story of the babe of Bethlehem and the gifts that he brought to mankind. One of those gifts is the remarkable power of his atonement to cleanse us from sin. Perhaps an even greater part of that cleansing power is its capacity to take us from a totally imperfect state and where we're filled with endless flaws and allow us to choose to become perfect as he is. That's an amazing gift. Another gift is that of the promise of the resurrection for me, and it's, it's hard to be able to even express the gratitude I feel to know what that promise means for my sweetheart. Someday, I'll have her back. The cancer will be gone, and she'll be perfectly restored for all eternity. That is a spectacular gift. Equally coupled to that gift is the promise of eternal life with her in the presence of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the great Elohim, our eternal Father in heaven, with our families. All of that is offered to each of us as we exercise our moral agency to choose to make and keep covenants, use the power of the atonement of Jesus Christ to overcome the weaknesses and imperfections, and to learn obedience to eternal law through our experiences here in mortality. I'm a witness that it's possible because of our Savior Jesus Christ, though at times incredibly difficult, through the grace of heaven, we can make it. The peace I felt that first Christmas home from my mission was still in my heart, 
it's my deepest wish that it may fill each of your hearts, whether young or old, that you will feel Christmas and the promise of the babe of Bethlehem and find peace to enable you to move forward in faith and hope of those eternal promises he brought as his gift to all mankind. This year, our Christmas tree experience will be different and new, but still filled with that magic and the promise of the babe of Bethlehem. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
Merry Christmas, brothers and sisters. On behalf of the stake presidency, again, we say Merry Christmas and much happiness and joy in this Christmas season. We love you very much. And on behalf of Carol Ann and I, we wish you a Merry Christmas as well, hopefully filled with joyous occasions and wonderful remembrances. At this time, I endorse all that has been said, whether it has been sung or spoken, as marvelous testimonies of the Savior Jesus Christ. We love Him, we worship Him, and in this season we revere Him as the divine Son of God, the Savior and Redeemer of the world. Many years ago, when I was a missionary in the Massachusetts Boston Mission, my second transfer in the mission was to a little town called Brattleboro, Brattleboro, Vermont. And as I walked into the apartment in Brattleboro, there was a poster on the wall, as missionaries are habit to do, um, that the poster on the wall was black in background, but then all of the words on the poster were brightly colored. And what it was were the names of the Lord Jesus Christ from the Old and New Testaments. Many of the names which are contained in those works of Scripture recorded there. That, to me, was a time of great remembrance and gave me peace and hope and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. To see up on the wall, in addition to all the scriptures that I had studied through the years, to see outwardly the name of Jesus Christ. Today, I receive comfort from many things, mostly in the scriptures, but at this time, I love specifically one reference that comes from Isaiah where he says for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace that to me is who Jesus Christ is from the time that he was born in those humble circumstances in a stable to today, to today where he truly sits at the right hand of the Father and is Lord of Lord, King of Kings. I love that. This summer I was captivated by a picture that I saw on the news and many of you may have seen it as well. It was a picture of what I'm assuming was an Afghanistani mother holding her infant baby, handing the baby over the fence to an American soldier so that that baby would be able to possibly have a greater and more perfect life, one filled with opportunity and privilege by being able to possibly come to the United States of America. At Christmas time, we often talk about gifts that we can give to the Savior. May I suggest that one of the gifts that we can give to the Savior is ourselves, that we give over to the Savior ourselves, our light, our talents, our time, our energies, and in this way, we truly can revere the babe of Bethlehem and be able to receive the great blessings of peace and of hope and of joy that the Savior promises. Not only for this season, but for all seasons. If we do this, we will be able to have this hope and peace and joy, not only on Christmas Day, but every day. Brothers and sisters, we love you. We testify that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, even the Eternal Father. We also testify that he came to this earth to redeem each and every one of us, to give us the great hope and peace and eternal life that can be ours through him, our Lord and Savior. God bless you. Merry Christmas.